friends. Welcome to the Glow Getters podcast. My name is Kayla Fahey Arndt, but you can call me KFA because nobody can say that last name. I teach and inspire leaders to step into their power, productive selves, and unlock their fullest potential. I'm a multi-passionate creative and scientist who climbed to the top of the healthcare leadership ladder by age 28, making six figures as a manager. I share what I've learned that I wish I knew when I landed my first leadership role at age 25. You can find more from me on my Patreon site at patreon.com slash KFA Glow Getters. Okay, now on to the show. Hey friend, thank you so much for joining me on today's episode of the Glow Getters podcast. I'm so excited that you're here because today we're going to be talking all about triggers and reality-based leadership. I know, it's a hot topic and it can be a little heavy, so I'm going to make it lighthearted. And we're going to be talking about bypassing the ego. Yeah, the ego. It's that thing inside of you that tells you stories about yourself or others that, you know, you automatically make assumptions and leads you down this rabbit hole of feeling a certain way, a certain way that you don't even know if it's true or not. It's just a story that you're telling yourself, right? So how do you get out of that mindset? So I'm going to be talking about that today. But first, I want to start by talking about this book called Calm. It's actually the book that goes along with the Calm app by Michael Acton Smith. And a friend had sent it to me a couple years ago, and I love it. I just look back to it from time to time because it has awesome quotes and graphics. So there's actually a proverb in here, proverb in here that I stumbled across the other night, and I was like, yes, this totally relates to triggers and reality-based leadership. So I just wanted to read it to you to preface our conversation. So here we go. It's called Two Wolves, a Cherokee Proverb, and it says, An old Cherokee told his grandson, My son, there is a battle between two wolves inside us all. One is evil, it is anger, envy, jealousy, sorrow, regret, greed, arrogance, self-pity, guilt, resentment, inferiority, lies, false pride, superiority, and ego. The other is good. It is joy, peace, love, hope, serenity, humility, kindness, benevolence, generosity, empathy, and truth. The grandson thought about this for a minute and then he asked his grandfather, which wolf wins? The old Cherokee simply replied, the one you feed. Oh, so powerful. I mean, it basically just says like we can choose the way that we act and react. Um, and it's it's really about, you know, are you evil? Or are you good? Are you reflecting and have joy or are you angry and envious? So um, I immediately thought of this leadership um, person in my life that I have followed for a while now. Her name is Cy Wakeman. It's spelled C-Y and then Wakeman, W-A-K-E-M-A-N. You need to check her out if you haven't yet. And her company is called Reality Based Leadership. So she is a drama researcher. I know, I've never heard of drama researcher before, but it's pretty cool. So I know that she has a human resources background, so she's all about the people. And she basically gives seminars and talks and does pod- has a podcast, YouTube channel, all that, gives out resources, especially for companies, for leadership Um Uh, retaining employees and all of that. And she always talks about reality-based leadership and um, your ego. And your ego is that thing that, yeah, it it tells you stories. It's full of pride. Um, You've got a, a story in your head that you're telling yourself made fully on assumptions. And so she really talks about, um, and I've talked about this on the podcast before, but flipping into high self and or being in low self. So when you're full of ego, you're kind of pointed down. You can't see other possibilities. You are um, closed minded and you're just making assumptions. You're just going down a rabbit hole. But if you are in high self, you're more reflective. You're asking questions. You're open to new possibilities. And you don't make as many assumptions because you're really being, you're being mindful and you're asking intentional questions. And so... Um, I wanted just to give an example of when you might need to check your ego or bypass your ego and ask yourself certain questions that I've learned from Cy Wakeman. And then you can either find the evil or the good, um, as in this proverb, which I found so powerful and totally related. So um, let me give you two examples. One is, say you're a leader and you're in a meeting and your direct report tells you they've missed a deadline. And you're shocked because you've been following up with your direct report. You've talked to them multiple times over the last week and they said they were going to deliver and then they didn't. So right away, you might feel 
you know, upset, you might actually feel your ears getting red or your cheeks getting red or you're burning inside and you're thinking, oh my goodness, this is huge. Like, especially for me, because this um, deadline really matters to my boss and to our organization. And I've also promised deadlines for other people like, what the heck? I wish they had asked me before or said something before they knew they were going to miss the deadline. I've been keeping in touch. Like, I don't know how this happened. They've had so much time to complete this project. That's your ego. That's a story that you're telling yourself. And in that moment, you can choose to either react or you can become reflective and take some time to respond. So that's one example. The second example is say you are um, responsible for cleaning your home and you've you told your spouse, you're like, I'm totally going to get our house clean this weekend, but you didn't get to it because you went grocery shopping and meal prepped, you um, took care of your child, you, um, you know, had to run some errands for your mom, whatever it is. And now it's like Sunday night and you're feeling super guilty because you want to just chill with your spouse, but you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't clean the house. Oh, and the laundry didn't get done. So there's two things. So the story you're telling yourself, what your ego is saying is you're a bad mom, you're a bad wife, you can't do all the things you said you were going to do, like you're not good enough. Oh my goodness. Whew. Have we ever felt either of those ways? That's your ego. That's your ego getting in the way, okay? So there's definitely a way to get out of this. So this is a practice that uh, Cy Wakeman shared on her website that you can actually find. It's a free resource called um, a new story exercise or editing your story uh, or ego bypass tool. Depends on how you uh, search for it, but you'll see it right away. And um, it's something that I've been doing at work for a while and trying to do more at home. And essentially, you want to ask yourself questions to get into high self. But um, before you use this in real time, let me just talk about her exercise that it actually includes you like writing it out. So to practice doing this, to you know listen to your thoughts. Listening to your thoughts isn't always normal for people. Um, we're often like your mind is going a million miles, miles an hour, and you never take time to really think like, what am I saying to myself? <laughs> So if you're stressed out and and thinking these negative thoughts, this is the time to take a break and actually do this exercise. That's what she says. So you sit down and you write out the story. You're like, write out what's happening to you. Like, don't judge it or anything. Just write it down. Just like brain vomit. Okay, don't edit it or anything. It's Nobody else is going to see it. So just write it down. And then she says, get a highlighter or just go through and underline everything that's stated as a fact. So like everything that's matter of fact, like, I didn't clean the house, okay? Or, you know, direct report missed deadline. And then go through each of those facts and facts and ask yourself, do I know that for sure? Is it a fact or is it a story I'm telling myself? So if you highlighted, I'm not good enough, then ask yourself, is that just a story I'm telling myself or is that really a fact? Because honestly, if you're making assumptions or if you're assigning intention or motive like oh maybe it was something you put in for the direct report was like they didn't want to get this done anyway it's not important to them well that's an assumption of motive you don't really know or if you're jumping to conclusions anything that's in you know you're adding your own assumptions or or judgment into it that's probably not a fact that's probably just an assumption so that's awesome so now with only the things that you left, underlined or highlighted, got rid of the things that are assumptions, that's your story. That's your story. And that's reality. Think facts and figures. You know, what do I know for sure is the question that Cy Wakeman always asks. What do I know for sure? Is this really a fact or is it just part of the story you're telling for yourself? So when you ask those questions, you become open-minded and you're in high self and you reflect. So using the mom example or cleaning the house example, okay, I didn't get the house clean, fact. I am, I'm a not good enough because I'm not a good mom, not true. I spent time with my kid, I did all these things for other people, I just didn't get to that fifth item on my list. So, so I'm definitely worthy, right? And next time, I'll give myself some grace. Or if you're, you know, using the leadership example from the direct report, you can think, okay, well... I don't know I don't know that this project isn't important to that person and I don't know why they missed the deadline and I'm not going to assume 
that they were able to work on it between the last time we talked and now. And so you might ask them questions to tell you more, like, can you tell me more about what the last week looked like for you? Can you tell me more about why you're going to miss the deadline? And then you're going to find out some things. Maybe something in their home life was going on. Maybe they had to reprioritize because you also asked them to do something else. So that way, instead of, you know, flying up your ladder, having a trigger, you're actually thinking, okay, I don't actually know the reasons to any of these, to what that person just said. I actually need to find out. So it seems really simple because you would think, duh, obviously, like a good human doesn't make assumptions like this. We give people grace. But when, you know, there are emotions involved or people or, you know, maybe there's a pattern or um, you also just came from a very crazy meeting or something and you're not your best self, um, practicing asking yourself, what do I know for sure, will help you slow down your reactions and also, you know, be more empathetic, um, be more kind, find humility, you know, actually love the people that you work with and love yourself. Find your truth. What do you know for sure? So just a leadership tip. Um, And this actually is a concept from Lean. So if you're familiar with Lean or any other, um, yeah, I would say, yeah, Lean's probably the most common. But in healthcare, we use Lean a lot or manufacturing or other industries. Uh, There is always a reflection built into the day. So a reflection of what went well today, what didn't go well today, and what do we want to do differently tomorrow, essentially, is what I always ask myself when I do my reflection. And something I recently started doing um, is asking myself, how can I be 1% better? Because change happens small. It, It happens over time incrementally, and it compounds over time. So if you can be 1% better every day, I mean, that's amazing. We often try to take these huge leaps like, oh, I'm going to be an amazing leader tomorrow. I'm 100% never jump to conclusions. I'm always going to ask questions and be in high self. (laughs) Well, I'm going to tell you right now that no, leadership or being a mom or any of that is not a straight arrow. It is a curvy line. So we all have to practice. So build some time into your day to reflect on what went well today, what didn't go as well as I'd hoped, and what can I do tomorrow to be 1% better. And there is no guilt or shame built into the reflection, especially when you talk about what didn't go well today. Because it's easy to, again, go down that rabbit hole and be like, oh my goodness, like literally I'm a terrible human. Like I suck at this. (laughs) No, there's no guilt or shame. Therefore, there is no ego in this reflection. The goal is just to get better. So when we learn from feedback, whether that's from others or from ourselves, feedback is always about the future. It's always about the future because you can't do anything to change the past. You know, just like the monkey said in Lion King, (laughs) the past is in the past. (laughs) I don't know. But you have to learn from feedback, but you can't change anything in the past. All you can do is change what you do in the future or starting right now, be in your future. So um, for me as a leader, I actually build this into the beginning of my day. So I actually reflect on the previous day, on the next day at the beginning in the morning, because honestly, I don't function as well in the afternoon. I'm a a morning person, so I get up super early. And by the time I leave for work, I just want to finish and close out my day and go home. But when I come in, I'm more, I'm more aspirational. I'm in higher self more likely. And so that's when I do my reflection. If I'm thinking about things at home, I do my reflection at night, um, like when I go to bed. So, um, you know, whatever practice you have with your spouse or with yourself or with your dog laying next to you in bed, whether that's cuddling, when you go to bed, say a little, you know, pep talk to yourself, you know, hey, here's what didn't go as well as I wanted to. Here's what I rocked. Like I did all those errands for other people, but my house is still dirty. That's okay. (laughs) I can clean it some other time and tell yourself you love yourself and that you're, you know, think of something you can do 1% better tomorrow. You can also do that in the morning. Sometimes when my alarm goes off, I just want a second there to kind of awaken my senses and I'll kind of lay open like kind of in Shavasana, almost like yoga pose. And I will do a quick meditation or um, just say how grateful I am to be awake and to be here today. And you can think, okay, how am I going to be 1% better today? 
All right, guys, so I hope that helps you. I'm going to be putting together a little worksheet for my Patreon patrons in my Patreon site, so I'm excited. If you're a patron, I'll have that ready for you, and you can snag it. Otherwise, I will link to the Ego Bypass Tool, the new story exercise from Cy Wakeman, so that you guys all have it, and to that Calm book, so you can check it out if you haven't. All right, thanks so much, and until next time, be a light in the world. Bye, guys. Whoa, that went by way too fast. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode of Glow Getters Podcast. You can get the bonus content for this podcast at my Patreon site at www.patreon.kfaglowgetters. And also you can check me out on Instagram at Kayla Fahey Arndt. All right, everyone, until next time, be a light in the world. Talk to you soon.